Over the years, we've discovered a lot of ancient inventions that we couldn't seem to figure out. For instance, I bet you didn't know that ancient people had nanotechnology. They also invented a seismograph hundreds of years before the first modern humans did. They also knew about flying machines and napalm. All of these inventions were truly brilliant, and they continue to befuddle modern experts. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most mind-boggling ancient inventions and artifacts that are still shrouded with mystery to this day. From the living stones of Sacsayhuaman to the mysterious Roman concrete, here are 15 old technologies scientists still can't explain. Number 15. The Living Stones of Sacsayhuaman Located near the outskirts of the city of Cusco in Peru is the walled complex of Sacsayhuaman. The Inca built this complex with dry stone walls in the 15th century. At first glance, you would think that the entire complex is ordinary, but if you take a closer look, you'll realize the sheer brilliance behind its construction. The dry walls in Sacsayhuaman are made of stones weighing up to a staggering 200 tons. Each of these stones were stacked on top of each other to form the walls. Each stone was cut precisely to fit into each other, and it's almost impossible to have this level of precision during their time. Experts believe that it took more than 20,000 men just to extract the stones from the nearby quarries and transport them 20 kilometers to the hill of the city of Cusco. Some people claim that perhaps the Inca pounded rock after rock for countless hours until they attained the final shape they were looking for. The entire site is considered to be an architectural and historical wonder. Despite many attempts to discover how the Inca managed to cut the stones and build the stone walls, the answer remains a mystery. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. Mysterious Sound Effects of Malta's Hypogeum Hal The Hypogeum of Hal Cefalini was accidentally discovered by construction workers in 1902. The following year, the underground structure was eventually excavated, and archaeologists were immediately shocked by how amazing the entire subterranean structure was. The entire hypogeum was carved out of limestone and served as a sanctuary before it was converted into a necropolis. It's the only known underground Bronze Age structure, and it's astounding to think about how it was constructed more than 5,000 years ago. While the entire hypogeum was incredible, one particular room captured the interest of researchers, the Oracle Chamber. Researchers noticed that any sound created inside the Oracle Room was magnified a hundredfold. Not only that, but if one person uttered several words inside the room, they would be heard throughout the entire structure. Although the acoustic properties of the hypogeum are still being studied, there are still a lot of things people don't know about it. Archaeologists think that the room may have been used as an oracle, although whether the acoustic properties were intentional or accidental is still a question. If it was intentional, does it mean that thousands of years ago, ancient people managed to design an entire structure that could enhance amplification? Number 13. The Ruins of Shan Mountain About 20 kilometers to the east of Nanjiang, China, along the side of Yanmen Shan Mountain, is the Yangshan Quarry. This quarry is known to be one of the most mysterious locations in China, with a massive stone being its claim to fame. In 1405 AD, the emperor's son ordered the construction of a massive steel, which is another name for a commemorative monument, to be built for the Ming Shaoling Mausoleum. He chose the massive stones on the mountain quarry as the material. However, midway into cutting and transporting the stones in the quarry, the workers realized that the blocks were far too big for the construction of the steel. The workers ended up abandoning the entire project, leaving behind huge rocks with missing chunks. This is where it gets interesting. Archaeologists are baffled by how the workers thought that they would be able to cut and move stones that are over 70 meters tall and over 30,000 tons. For comparison, the largest monolith in ancient and modern worlds is the Thunderstone, located in Russia, which weighs about 1,250 tons. Despite the failed construction, a lot of massive stones were still removed from the quarry. No one knows how people back then accomplished it, but some believe that the workers received a helping hand from something or someone. Unfortunately, despite the fact that the ancient Chinese people documented almost everything, there are little to no writings about this supposed failed construction. Number 12. 1,600-year-old goblet proves that the ancient Romans knew nanotechnology. This is a goblet that's roughly about 1,600 years old. It's a Roman chalice that bears a scene depicting King Lycurgus of Thrace, and for this reason, it's known as the Lycurgus Cup. You might think that this is nothing but an ancient goblet, but this is actually an example of Roman nanotechnology. The chalice appears jade green when lit from the front, but if it's lit from behind, it turns blood red. 
This property puzzled scientists for many years until 1990, when a team of researchers in England analyzed the cup and discovered that the artisans who created the chalice dabbled with nanotechnology. To get the color-changing property of the chalice, the Romans infused the glass with particles of silver and gold. This made the particles extremely small, less than one thousandth the size of a grain of table salt, to arrive at this incredible property. Researchers today think that it's impossible that the Romans created the chalice by accident. It appears that they knew exactly what they were doing when they were mixing all the materials. Researchers think that in the future, this Roman nanotechnology may one day be used to make handheld devices for detecting pathogens in people's saliva. It's amazing that inventors today get inspiration from ancient technology to develop modern tools. Number 11. The Disc That Might Be An Ancient Typewriter This elaborate clay disc is called the Phaistos Disc. It most likely dates back to the middle of the late Minoan Bronze Age, about 4,000 years ago. This mysterious disc was discovered in 1908 in the Minoan Palace of Phaistos, and since then, this artifact has been puzzling researchers. The creation of the disc itself is a mystery. Experts think that metal stamps or metal dies have been used to imprint the symbols on the disc. After stamping the designs, the disc was then baked at a very high temperature, sealing the material and the symbols. This method is incredibly unusual, and it wasn't used until about 600 years ago, which meant the creation of the Phaistos disc was way ahead of its time. Each symbol in the disc was individually stamped, which meant more than 200 metal dies were created. This led researchers to believe that more discs have been created, but so far, no other discs were found around the area. Furthermore, no metal dies with a strange symbol were ever found on the site. Many researchers also still don't know the purpose of this disc. Some believe that this was supposed to be an ancient typewriter, while some believe that this disc contains a song, a poem, or a ritual of some sort. All we know is that this disc is most likely Cretan in origin, and it's written in a version of the Minoan language that dates back from 1850 to 1550 BC. However, it might take us a while before we can truly decipher the meaning behind the strange symbols. Number 10. Ancient Flying Machines It's no question that India has several of the most brilliant minds in the world. For instance, Indian mathematician Aryabhata first used zero as a symbol. An inventor Ajay V. Bhatt made the universal serial bus, or USB, that is widely used today. But did you know that the most intriguing Indian creation is a flying machine known as Vimanas? Vimanas, also known as Rathas, are often depicted as flying chariots, but they're also sometimes illustrated as flying palaces. These amazing flying inventions are often mentioned in Sanskrit epics and Hindu texts. Several literary works also talk about gods who fight against evil forces while riding this strange aircraft. These flying machines differ in characteristics, and a person must be knowledgeable enough to drive them. There are even instructions on how to fly them, and they're pretty precise. Some texts describe a Vimana that could travel incredibly long distances in a short amount of time, and there are even some that could launch lethal attacks. Some of these machines were also said to have a sound capturing device that enabled the pilot to eavesdrop inside the enemy plane. So far, we haven't seen any of these ancient aircraft, which led many to believe that perhaps the ancient people in India encountered beings who possessed technology far advanced for their time. Aliens? Time travelers? What do you think? Number 9. Magical Sunstone The Vikings were feared by many for being incredible and fearless fighters, but they also have been reputed to be remarkable seafarers. Recently, researchers discovered that perhaps the Vikings were aided by a magical gem that could reveal the sun's position no matter how cloudy or dark it was. The stone was called Solar Stone, or Sunstone, in ancient Nordic sagas, and for many years people thought that this magical stone was nothing but a legend. But in 2010, a crystal was found in a shipwreck off the coast of the Channel Islands. The sunstone was made of a calcite substance that detected sunlight no matter how cloudy or foggy it was. With this sunstone and the sun compass, the Vikings skillfully navigated the ocean with ease, even in darkness. Scientists today may be able to explain the properties behind this sun-detecting gem, but for people in ancient times, this sunstone may have truly been magical. Number 8. The Lost Treasure of the Greek Fire Hailed as one of the deadliest and most destructive weapons ever made, the Greek fire was a highly coveted substance only known to a few. This incendiary weapon was a flaming mixture used by the Byzantine Empire to defeat their opponents, even in the ocean. It was said that even in water, this weapon could easily set their opponents ablaze. It's no wonder that this weapon is credited for the success of the Byzantine Empire in naval wars. That's why the exact ingredient for this destructive concoction was only known to a few. 
Many tried to recreate this deadly weapon, but to this day, no one can replicate the exact effect the Greek fire had. Historical texts claim that the fire produced by this incendiary weapon would cling not only to wood, but also to human flesh. The flame was impossible to extinguish with water, which meant being in the middle of the sea didn't decrease its potency. What's more intriguing is that even when the enemies of the empire learned several of the ingredients of the Greek fire, they couldn't replicate it. They tried to work out the properties and the way to recreate the same effects, but none of them were ever successful. Researchers today think that the secret ingredient behind its effectiveness is a petroleum-based liquid. The way to recreate the Greek fire was never written in any records. And perhaps the secret really died along with the Byzantine Empire. Number 7. Ancient Earthquake Detector You might think that this is just an ordinary ornamental vase, but this is actually the world's first seismoscope. This creation was the brainchild of Chinese astronomer, mathematician, and engineer Zhang Heng. Zhang presented this ancient earthquake detector in the year 132 CE to the Han court. Needless to say, many were quite confused as to how to use his invention at first. Seismoscopes are instruments that indicate the shaking of the earth during an earthquake. Zhang's seismoscope in particular was sensitive enough to detect the direction where the earthquake came from. Around the vessel are eight dragon heads facing the eight principal directions of the compass. Underneath, you can see large toads with open mouths facing toward the dragons. When an earthquake occurs, the pendulum inside the jar would knock the ball inside a dragon's mouth and drop it to the mouth of the toad underneath. Even though people couldn't feel the earthquake, this invention managed to tell where the tremors on the ground came from. For this reason, Zhang called this invention the earthquake weather vane. Back then, Zhang didn't have any way to prove that his invention worked. Today, we have tools that can easily simulate an earthquake, and researchers can freely test any tools that they have. Zhang was met with skepticism until one of the balls finally dropped. People doubted him further when the ball dropped because no one nearby felt an earthquake. The people only believed Zhang when days after the ball dropped, they received news about a massive earthquake that originated hundreds of miles away in the direction the jar indicated. Unfortunately, no surviving replica of this seismoscope was ever retrieved. And to this day, we still can't recreate the exact mechanism of this ancient earthquake detection tool. Number 6. The Doorway of the Gods in Peru This is the Aramu Muru, located near Lake Titicaca in Peru. This mysterious structure was discovered in the early 1990s, and it's believed to be an abandoned Incan construction project. The entire stone is about 23 feet square, with a strange door-like shape carved into it. There's also a small alcove or nook in the stone, big enough to fit a person. No one knows what's inside of it, and no one knows the exact purpose of why it was made in the first place. Some people claim that they had seen people disappearing into the doorway before, and they've also seen giant men walking into the stone accompanied by glowing balls of light. For this reason, the strange stone has been named the Gate of the Gods, and many paranormal experts from all around the world travel to the ruin in hopes of witnessing the strange activities around the stone. Number 5. Ancient Swiss Army Knife You've probably heard about the Swiss Army Knife before, and maybe you even own one. These knives are incredibly useful, and it has just about any tool you need. A corkscrew, a scissor, a bottle opener, a small knife, and even a small wood saw. Since it was invented by Carl Elsner in 1891 for soldiers, it's now become a trusted tool for many people around the world. With that being said, would you believe me if I told you that 65,000 years ago, early humans in Southern Africa created their own Swiss Army knife? It sounds impossible, but it's true. Although these prehistoric Swiss Army knives aren't as advanced as you think they are. These ancient army knives are stone tools used for many purposes, including cutting wood, plants, skin, flesh, and more. The fact that people from 65,000 years ago made this tool isn't the only thing that's astounding. These army knives became the key for archaeologists to discover that tens of thousands of years ago, people across Africa communicated with each other. These stone Swiss army knives were made to a similar template across great distances in Africa. The fact that they were shaped similarly led scientists to believe that people across Southern Africa shared information with each other and were socially connected somehow. Number 4. Ageless Sword of Gaojian There are a lot of notable swords in history, but the Sword of Gaojian is definitely among the most intriguing. It doesn't look like it, but this sword is actually more than 2,500 years old. This blade is made of tin bronze, and its creation dates back to 771 to 476 BCE. Many artifacts made with similar materials and of similar age would have shown signs of aging, 
but the sword of Gao Jian retained its sharpness and shine. The blade was first discovered in 1965 by a team excavating a tomb in Hubei, China. The sword was encased in a wooden box. The chamber where it was found was damp, and so archaeologists expected the sword to be damaged. They were shocked to find an almost flawless sword instead. Its shine wasn't the only property it retained. When the archaeologists tested the sharpness of the sword, it easily cut through 20 pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. Aside from the mystery surrounding the exact materials used to forge this ageless sword, historians also debated over who owned it. It's widely accepted that this sword belonged to the King of Yue, who was renowned for being a firm and steadfast leader. I must say that this sword was truly fitting for the king. Number 3. Damascus Steel A good weapon is one of the things a warrior should have, and that's exactly why Damascus Steel was highly coveted during its peak. This mythical steel possessed not only a striking appearance, but also flexibility and strength. During the Crusades, many European warriors talked about unbeatable swords that the Muslim soldiers used. Centuries ago, this material was known as Woot Steel, and it was among the best in the world. It was highly coveted as a material because every sword made with it was stable and flexible at the same time. There is no question that nothing beats Damascus Steel. That's why to this day, a lot of bladesmiths still want to know the exact recipe to recreate the strength and flexibility of this material. So far, no one has been able to recreate true Damascus steel successfully. Some people have discovered what it was made of, but the exact way it was smelted or created can't be replicated by anyone today. Number 2. Ancient Doctor Who Performed Rhinoplasty More Than 2,000 Years Ago When do you think the very first successful surgery was done? You might not believe me, but one of the hardest surgeries was accomplished about two and a half millennia ago. This is Sushruta. He was an ancient Indian physician and surgeon whose name is still remembered to this day. You'd be surprised to hear how much he accomplished in his time. This ancient doctor accomplished over 300 surgical procedures and made over 120 surgical instruments. Not only that, but he was a person who performed intricate cataract surgeries and even rhinoplasty, despite the practice being way too far ahead of his time. Unlike today when plastic surgery is mostly done for cosmetic reasons, Sushruta performed it more for reconstructive purposes. Although he documented exactly how he performed rhinoplasty, how he knew it would work is still a question to this day. Without any modern tools or medicine available, Sushruta made use of leaves, castor oil plants, licorice powder, red sandalwood, barberry plants, and sesame oil. I know, it sounds more like a grocery list, but these medicinal plants became the key to Sushruta's successful surgeries. The lack of tools and medicine is one of the reasons why a lot of people look up to him for his sheer skill and brilliance to this day. In addition to his surgical feats, Sushruta also wrote about the use of wine as anesthesia and the use of leeches to keep wounds free of blood clots. Learning about what he's done makes me all the more thankful for all the medical inventions we achieved during contemporary times. Number 1. Roman Concrete Was Better Than Modern Materials it's no question that we now possess some of the best tech and materials in the history of humankind. However, did you know that some scientists think that the Romans produced better concrete than us? Even after thousands of years, many concrete Roman structures still stand across Europe to this day. This is a stark comparison to modern concrete that crumbles in a matter of decades. For many years, researchers have been wondering what exactly the Romans put in their concrete to make it so strong. As it turns out, Ancient Romans put several special ingredients in their concrete to make it stand for thousands of years. The secret is that they mixed lime with volcanic rock and added seawater. Ancient Roman concrete can last up to more than 2,000 years, even submerged in water, while modern concrete only lasts for 50 years at most. I guess we have a lot to learn about the ancient Romans in terms of concrete making. There are definitely a lot of mysterious ancient inventions that we still can't explain to this day. Which ancient technology intrigued you the most? Let me know about your thoughts in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.